A flotation device can be a life jacket or what some people call a lifesaver. They're important even for good swimmers because if an accident happens, a flotation device like a life, like a, like a life jacket, obviously I'm training these teeth for next week, a flotation device like a, like a life jacket, I should have gone over that one again, you know. <laughs> Like a life jacket can save your life. I once heard a story about some people who went fishing on a big lake. Lots of water. Before they left, everyone got their life jackets on and were ready to go. That is, except one man who didn't want to wear one. Well, that was a bit silly, wasn't it? Yes, you wear a life jacket, wouldn't you? Yes, we do. Well, after they went onto the big lake, a storm came. The wind blew. It pleases us. And the waves came up, went up into the boat, and do you know the waves became so high that they turned the boat over. Yes, they did. The boat sank. Now, the people who were wearing life jackets they made it to the shore and they were saved. But the man who didn't want to wear his life jacket drowned. Oh dear. Don't worry, this is just a story. No one really dies. But it could have happened. I wonder what you think about what happened in that story. The man who didn't wear his life jacket, he could have been saved. Had he chosen to take that life jacket he so needed, didn't he? You know, this story reminds me of something the Bible tells us. You just knew I was going to say that at some point, didn't you? A story about a man called Nicodemus. That's a good name, isn't it? I think I'll change my name to Nicodemus. Far more interesting than Adrian. He wanted to find out how he could be saved. And he asked, Jesus all about it. And after he had a long chat with Jesus, Jesus said to him this, God loved the world so much that he gave his one and only Son that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. Wow, that's amazing, isn't it? That's got to be worth an amen. Amen. Absolutely. You see, Jesus is our life jacket. God sent him to earth to save us. Through his death and resurrection on Easter Sunday, that great day we get all the chocolate, we can be forgiven and have eternal life with God. All we have to do is believe and accept Jesus as our saviour. We'll still face storms, but when we do, we'll have our life jacket, Jesus, as our lifesaver. It's foolish to go out into the water without a life jacket, but it's even more foolish to try to sail the sea of life without Jesus. Let's pray. Dear God, I know you sent Jesus to die on the cross to save us. I pray that each and every one here today and those watching online will take hold of the one thing that can save us, Jesus, our Saviour. In Jesus' name, Amen. Amen. Okay. Just before I move on, this is like getting back to the old days. I spent so many months just talking to that camera there. It's lovely to have real live people here again. It's just wonderful. Liam's had it for a few weeks, so you know, he's got used to you all again. All I've been doing is talking to you. And it's lovely talking to you at home. Do come and join us. That would be wonderful to see your faces too. But I have real faces here this morning. Do you remember when I used to give you things when you came on a Sunday morning? Doesn't that seem a long time ago? Would you like to come and get it? 
the air. Some nice resources for you until Kids Alive magazine. And I know that the rest of you can't see, you know what a Kids Alive magazine is. Um, maybe, um, maybe some of the ladies who recently joined us want, want to have a look at one. There's some on the table, you're welcome to, um, to take one. But the sort of resources that I give the young people are just about what we talked about. And there's this fabulous one here, uh, what Jesus, our one and only lifesaver. You see the little lifesaver ones. And that's John 3.16 in all of the little pictures of the lifesaver to help remember about that. If any of you have a young person at home, I have a spare one, you can take it. Um, would you like it, Judith? Don't worry about the moving the camera, I'll just give it to Judith. You can give it to Oliver, he'll love that.
Knowing you, Jesus, there is no greater thing. We turn to our Bible reading now, as you can see on the screen, for those of you who are in the church, it's John 3, verses 1 to 17. This morning I'm reading from the English Standard Version. John 3, verses 1 to 17. Now there was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus, a ruler of the Jews. This man came to Jesus by night and said to him, Rabbi, we know that you are a teacher come from God. No one can do these signs that you do unless God is with him. Jesus answered him, Truly, truly, I say to you, unless one is born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Nicodemus said to him, How can a man be born when he is old? Can he enter a second time into his mother's womb and be born? Jesus answered, Truly, truly, I say to you, unless one is born of water and the Spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. That which is born of the flesh is flesh, and that which is born of the Spirit is spirit. Do not marvel that I say to you, you must be born again. The wind blows where it wishes, and you hear its sound, but you do not know where it comes from or where it goes. So it is with everyone who is born of the Spirit. Nicodemus said to him, How can these things be? Jesus answered him, Are you the teacher of Israel? And yet you do not understand these things. Truly, truly, I say to you, we speak of what we know and bear witness to what we have seen. But you do not receive our testimony. If I have told you of earthly and things, you do not believe. So how can you believe if you, I tell you of heavenly things? No one has ascended into heaven except he who descended from heaven, the Son of Man. And as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, so must the Son of Man be lifted up that whoever believes in him may have eternal life. For God so loves the world that he gave his only Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have eternal life. For God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world, but in order that the world may be saved through him. Amen. Amen. We come now to our time of prayer. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your continuing faithfulness as you work within the lives of each and every member of this core, cores up and down the country and churches of all denominations here in the UK and around the world. We pray for each and every one of you who have joined us online this morning or are watching this meeting later on our YouTube channel or Facebook. On this, the 77th anniversary of D-Day, we remember the over 120,000 soldiers who gave their lives for peace and freedom on that day.
We also pray this morning for our core officer, Liam, who's been in London all week at the Willing Booth Training College. And we look forward to seeing him again when he returns to us on Tuesday. We pray for everyone known to us who are unwell or suffering from a long-term medical condition. Bring healing to those who are unwell, wherever they may be. Let everyone feel your presence right now as we pray and give thanks for all your many blessings in our lives. We pray for all those who live alone during these difficult times and for those who are finding it hard to rejoin society as things start to open up again. And in a short time of silence, this is your opportunity to bring before the Lord anything on your heart right now that you need to pray for. Let's pray the prayer that Jesus the Saviour himself taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the glory, the power, the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Amen. Lord, we thank you that all our prayers, those spoken out loud and those prayed in silence, will be answered by you in your time. Now going to take up our offering. There won't be any music this morning um, as Paul Paul is away, um, but please do one at a time if you um, want to give your offering at the end of the meeting. That's fine. The camera is pointed up at the screen, so um, you won't be seen. But if you feel more comfortable doing it later. You Father, we thank you for these offerings. May we use them according to the way that you would. 
wish them to be used in your service here in Woods Beach. Amen. Amen. Have notices for this morning. After having a week off, Dizzy Bees is on again this Wednesday from 9.30 till 11 o'clock. Our prayer gatherings will be Monday, Tuesday, Thursday and Friday. So basically every day except Wednesday when Dizzy Bees is on. And our prayer gathering is from 9.15 to 9.45. And obviously for each evening, six nights a week, we are still providing our food our soup kitchen for those who are rough sleepers and vulnerable. Uh, hopefully, no one in this room falls into that category. But if you do, come along. Everyone is welcome without judgment or comment. Okay. Does anybody else have any notes <coughs> before I move on? That's what I like. We are now going to move to our next song, a song that is traditionally sung at Christmas, but very pertinent for our theme this morning of Jesus the Saviour. So we can remain seated again for this one as we contemplate our relationship with Jesus.
wanted to see that one. When Kerry and I normally um, have sat this in the past, Kerry normally sings the uh, tune and I do a harmony over the top of the chorus, and all I could hear was the harmony. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, my rock and my redeemer. Amen. Amen. Okay, in our Bible reading earlier, we, we heard about a Pharisee called Nicodemus. Still think I might change my name to Nicodemus. I like the way it sounds. Nicodemus. Hey, what's your name? My name is Nicodemus. Rolls off the tongue. No, Jim told me that's a good idea, so I'll stick with Adrian. What's Nick? Yeah, I just called Nick. No, it's nowhere near as exciting as Nicodemus. In fact, the Bible tells us that he said, um, Nicodemus thought that, um, unlike most of the Pharisees, um, he recognised that Jesus was a bit special and he said, Rabbi, we know that you are a teacher come from God, but no one can do these signs that you do unless God is with him. So Nicodemus recognised this about Jesus. He knew that Jesus was a bit special. And Jesus had replied, Truly, truly, I say to you, unless one is born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Now, Nicodemus was a bit confused by this answer, and I think I might have been too at the time. How can you be born again? Jesus, are you saying we have to go back into our mother's wombs and be born again? Surely that's not possible. What are you telling us, Jesus? Now, of course, Jesus wasn't saying that. So, how did Jesus <coughs> respond to Nicodemus? He says, Truly, truly, I say to you, unless one is born of water and the Spirit, ah, he cannot enter the kingdom of heaven. Unless one is born of the Spirit, water and the Spirit, he cannot enter the enter the kingdom of heaven. That which is born of flesh is flesh, and that which is born of the spirit is spirit. Ah, Jesus is speaking about being baptised in the spirit. We heard about that over the last couple of weeks, didn't we? Firstly, we celebrated Pentecost, and last week, Liam unpacked it a bit more as he looks at walking in the spirit. But let's get back to Nicodemus. He just doesn't get it. Jesus goes on to say, No one has ascended into heaven except he who descended from heaven, the Son of Man, i.e. me, Jesus. And as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, so must the Son of Man be lifted up, that whoever believes in him may have eternal life. Then Jesus goes on to say one of the most famous lines of text in the Bible, John 3.16, which of course you all know by heart, don't you, church? Yeah, right. For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son that whoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. For God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world, but in order that the world might be saved through him. Okay, that sort of recapped where we are. Who remembers the song, Three Steps to Heaven? Do you have a certain age? Yes. Obviously the ladies on the right are far too young to remember. <laughs> yeah, right. So, Three Steps to Heaven. It was an amazingly popular song for those of you who are too young to remember. Um, it was recorded by artists over the years such as Eddie Cochran, whoever he was. Yeah. <laughs> to Shwadi Wadi, yeah, I know who that was. <laughs> it talks about the three steps you need to find love. And in the words of the song, it, it ends up saying, and that's heaven to me. You know that song, you, Three Steps to Heaven? 
Excellent. It goes on to say that you must follow these three steps or you won't find heaven. Now for anyone who's forgotten or not familiar with the song, he's not talking about you know, God in heaven, the heaven that we would talk about on Sunday morning. He's, he's talking about uh, the, the songwriter's interpretation of heaven on earth, i.e. love. The idea is that the idea that there are steps to heaven, of course, is not a new one. Many people find the image of a stairway leading from earth to heaven easy to comprehend. It's easy to imagine walking up steps from earth actually into heaven. But it's also just as easy to imagine a staircase leading the other way, isn't it, church? But let's have a look at our own three steps to heaven. We're not going to write our own song, don't worry. Um, but I do have three ideas for us to think about for three steps to God's heaven. For our step one, let's take our inspiration from the song and look at the word love for a minute. And we're very familiar with John 3.16. For God loved the world so much that he gave his one and only Son that everyone who believes in him will not perish but have eternal life, or everlasting life, depending on the version you're reading. And in 1 John 4, 9, it says, God showed how much he loved us by sending his one and only Son into the world so that we might have eternal life through him. Jesus died on the cross for us. Such love. But let's make it even more personal than that. Just in case you didn't know, church, those of you at home, God loves you. Just in case you didn't know. We've got that already over here. I'll say that again. Just in case you didn't know, church, God loves you. Yay! Thank 
first time came when he was promoted to glory, he found himself on this wonderful stairway leading to heaven. And he found he was almost at the top of this stairway, but he was dismayed to find that the last flight, the last few stairs, were missing. There was a gap between where he was on the top stair and heaven above him. And the man became very angry. An angel came down to meet the man and asked, why was he so angry? The man said that he couldn't reach heaven from the stair he was on. And the angel said, oh no. You forgot about the third step, said the angel. What's the third step, said the man. The last flight of stairs is always missing on this staircase, said the angel. I'll tell you what you have to do. If you can truthfully answer yes to two questions. Do you know that God loves you and have you accepted his love? Oh yes, said the man. Have you accepted Jesus Christ as your Saviour and have you tried to live with faith according to God's word? Yes, said the man. Then the angel said, all you have to do now is stand on the top stair, raise your arms and ask God to carry you home. And he will, if you have faith that he will. Okay. Though I don't know if there'll be a staircase or not, some of us here do, do we? And if there is, different people may find themselves on different parts of it. I am sure, though, that if I find myself on one, I am going to raise my arms and ask God, my Father, to carry me home, amen? You see, Jesus really is the Saviour, as we heard in our talk earlier in the meeting. And I'll leave you with our three steps to heaven. Step one, know that God loves you and accept his love. Step two, accept Jesus Christ as your saviour and try to live with faith according to his word. And step three, ask God to carry you home when your time comes and have faith that he will. I'm going to end this morning with a short prayer. And it would be great if you would pray with me, line by line. I'll read the line and you repeat it. Is that okay? Will you do that? Yeah. Marvellous. Let's pray. <clears throat> Father God, our God, I know that you love me. I know that you love me. Here and now, here and now, I accept your personal love for me. I accept your personal love for me. I accept Jesus Christ as my Saviour. I accept Jesus Christ as my Saviour. And I will always try to live my life. And I will always try to live my life with faith according to your word. With faith according to your word. Amen. 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 Okay, our final song for this morning is called Teach Me to Dance. And guess what, church? If you're able, it would be great if you would stand and clap. And if you feel like moving about, do that too. Because it's a great way to end a meeting. Yeah? Do what you like. No one, no one on the camera can see you. It's pointing up at the screen. It's just us here in a safe space. So, let's have a call. <laughs>
Well, it's on everybody. Oh, if only you lot at home could see what's been going on here in the room during that uh, during that last <laughs> last time. But it's wonderful. It'd be joyous. It's so. Um, being a Christian is not about being miserable, about being quiet and silent. It's about being joyful. Because the most joyful thing in the world is to know that you are in relationship with the Lord Jesus. And that by His grace that you are going to live in eternity with Him forever. Is, I mean, how much better can that be? Amen? Amen. And if that's not worth clapping and dancing for, I don't know what it is. Let's pray. Father, we thank you that we were able to come together this morning on such a joyful day. We thank you for the songs of Brett Kendrick this morning that he's made them available for churches to be able to use. Um, if you didn't know Jesus this morning, I pray that you have been able to know something of him that you didn't know before. Maybe you've found him, maybe you've communicated with him for the first time. I pray that's the case. If you already knew Jesus, I pray that you've been able to reaffirm your relationship with him through this meeting this morning. Above all, I pray for you and I bless you and have a great week and we look forward to seeing you again very, very soon. Through our precious Lord Jesus' name, Amen. Amen. Amen.